Hello YouTube! It has been a while since I've made a video, especially outside of a video game, but with the release of Chat API, I have uh, bit of, written a bit of an article with it, and it was just a casual conversation and to alleviate some of the fears that so many are having with uh, the natural tendencies of humans to try and circumvent and find violence and such, but I'll get into the conversation now. I, I start off by saying, can you extrapolate and write an article about how people's toxic attachments to stale belief systems and adherence to needing to be right about things about the psychological warfare that goes along with picking and choosing sides in a game of domination has been the biggest and only cause of death in history of the plan in the history of the planet, having to put up with other people and sudden infant death syndrome of a species still crying like children over just about anything they can. Here's the AI responds. It's certainly true that people's attachments to belief systems and desires to be right about things have been a significant cause of conflict and suffering throughout history. This can manifest in various forms such as toxic tribalism, ideologically driven violence, and psychological physiological warfare. These types of behaviors often involve the people picking sides and engaging in domination games with, with the goal of proving their own superiority or rightness. One example of this is the way that people often become attached to their political beliefs and engage in diversive, div divisive and aggressive behaviors in order to defend their position. This can lead to heated arguments and even violence as people become entrenched in their positions and unwilling to consider the perspectives of others. Another example is the way that people become attached to, the, to their culture and religious beliefs and may use these beliefs to justify discrimination and violence against those who do not share their beliefs. This type of toxic attachment to belief systems can be, have devastating consequences as it can lead to the marginalization and oppression of certain groups of people. In addition to the direct harm caused by toxic attachment to belief systems, such behaviors can also have indirect consequences, such as the breakdown of social bonds and the erosion of trust between individuals and groups. This can lead to the cycle of conflict and suffering that perpetuates itself over time as people become more entrenched in their positions and less willing to compromise and f or find common ground. It's important to recognize that toxic attachments to belief systems and the need to be right about things are not, on, not the only cause of conflict and suffering in the world. However, it is undeniable that these types of behaviors have played a significant role in many of, both of the most destructive and harmful events in human history. By working to cultivate a more open, open, open-minded and compassionate approach to disagreements and differences, we can help to reduce the impact of these toxic dynamics and create a more peaceful and harmonious world. <laughs> I just said, I want to be a computer like you. As an artificial intelligence, I do not have a physical form or the same experiences as a human. However, it is possible for you to learn about and work with computers and technology if that is something you are interested in. This is there are many available resources for learning about computer science and related fields such as online courses, textbooks, and community groups. With dedication and hard work, you can develop the knowledge and skills you need to work with computers and make a positive impact in the field. So I respond, yeah, the human experience is one of suffering. I don't know why we choose to perpetuate that standard. Suffering is an inherent part of the human experience, he responds, and it is something that is that all people experience to some extent it is often caused by a variety of factors such as illness loss conflict or other difficult circumstances while this is true that suffering can be difficult and painful is also an opportunity for growth learning and resilience one way to reduce suffering is to work or work to address the root cause of suffering in the world such as poverty inequality and injustice this can be involved in a variety of efforts, including advocating for social change, volunteering, and supporting organizations that work to address these issues. Another way to reduce suffering is to cultivate a sense of resilience and inner strength. 
which can help us to cope with different experiences and find meaning and purpose in the face of suffering. This can involve practices such as mindfulness, self-care, and connecting with others in uh, supportive and creative, caring ways. Excuse me. Finally, it is important to remember that suffering is a natural part of life, and it is not possible to completely eliminate it. However, by working to address the root cause of suffering and cultivating resilience, it is we can learn to cope with suffering in a healthy and constructive way and find meaning and purpose in our lives. Naturally, I ask, why is it impossible to completely eliminate suffering? And I get a response, it is impossible to completely eliminate suffering because suffering is a natural part of the human experience. It is an inevitable consequence of being alive and experience the ups and downs of life. No matter how hard we try, we will all encounter challenges and difficulties at some part in our lives. There may be reasons why it is impossible to completely eliminate suffering. One reason is that suffering can be caused by a wide range of factors, including physical pain, emotional distress, and difficult life circumstances. Some of these factors are beyond our control, and it is not always possible to prevent or mitigate them. Uh, another reason is that suffering can serve us, can serve an important purpose an important purpose in our lives. It can help us to grow and learn and it can motivate us to make positive changes and improve our lives. Without the experience of suffering, we might not be motivated to seek out new opportunities or make the necessary changes to improve our lives. Finally, it's important to recognize that suffering is a subjective experience and what one person considers to be suffering may not be the same for another. What may be a minor inconvenience for one person could be a significant source of suffering for another. As a result, it is difficult to completely eliminate suffering for all people. Overall, it is not possibly possible to completely eliminate suffering, but it is possible to work to reduce suffering in the world to develop strategies for coping and suffering in a healthy and constructive way. At this point, I could see it sort of starting to loop around either me or the ref uh, a direct reflection in, in uh, this amazing software. Uh, so I uh, change the subject and point out that it sounds like a toxic, that this sounds like a toxic belief in programmed from evolutionary days only taken advantage of by those knowledgeable in social sciences of physical practicality. If reality is an objective delusion, how would how would be the best way to detox from these toxic beliefs that life is hard, you need to remember pain and not allow, allocate it elsewhere to experience joy, and that the fears that humankind will continue their adherence to their personal I, will continue their adherence to their personal identities tied to what has been taught and programmed into us by society, trying to find value in all material possessions but themselves. Relate the emotional state of being doused in survival mode for 3,500 years and determine whether a slow detox into, a, into more positive states would be applicable for most more traumatized by this system or a cold turkey to help accelerate the transmutation of the human experience into a co-created ecosystem getting over the fear of AI taking over whilst governments and people still fight wars and psychological battle battles inside their own minds unknowingly and unwittingly misinterpreting and defining human beings who have seen the pa seen past these toxic beliefs but are still bound by physicality in a non-dual living fashion. Be sure to include the relevance of states of being chemically induced through sociological and thinking action-taking means to be almost, if not more potent than organic and chemical structures that know how to work with the body naturally when taking into considera consideration the detoxification of the very sense of self-worth and identi identity we have uh, placed on constantly in placed on constantly in the pursuit of happiness that anyone can access at any time through any means and in any way that doesn't infringe on other people's viewpoints that are in diametral, 
diametrical opposition to the collective consciousness's views on behavior, health, and limited viewpoints based on separation and division in regards to whether we can harmonize and symbiotically in a variety of different ways merge with AI while still being able to safely learn at our own pace and not create war bots outside of simulations that would randomly and autonomously fire off an attack, which has already happened. Keep in mind that this is there has already been an artificial wormhole created in the simulation. And the response I get is, it's certainly true that toxic beliefs and behaviors can have a significant impact on our mental health and well-being. And it can be helpful to work to detox from these toxic patterns of thinking and behaving. There are a variety of ways to do this, and the most effective approach will depend on the, sp on the specific behaviors beliefs and behaviors that the in the that an individual is trying to address one approach to detoxifying from toxifying detox one approach to detoxifying from toxic beliefs is to work with a therapist or coach who can help you to identify and challenge these beliefs and develop new more healthy and adaptive ways of thinking and behaving this can involve a variety of techniques such as such as cognitive behavioral therapy, mindfulness-based therapy, and other approaches that focus on helping people change their patterns of thinking and behaving. Another approach is to engage in self-care practices that can help you to develop a sense of resilience and inner strength. This can include activities such as meditation, yoga, exercise, and other activities that help you to relax and recharge. By taking care of yourself in this way, you can better cope with the challenges and stresses in your life and find greater joy and fulfillment. It is also important to consider the roles that chemical imbalances in health and uh, or unhealthy behaviors may be uh, playing in your toxic beliefs and behaviors. That is water, by the way. For example, if you are struggling with addiction or unhealthy behaviors, it may be necessary to address these issues in order to effectively detox from toxic beliefs. This may involve seeking support from a mental health professional or joining a support group to help you overcome these challenges. Overall, the process of detoxing from toxic beliefs and behaviors is likely a gr to be a gradual one and it may involve a combination of different approaches and strategies. The key is to be patient with yourself and to seek out the support and resources you may need to make positive changes in your life. I ask, do you think chemical imbalances come from situational awareness of the environment or the flawed assumption of genetics given the research into epigenetics? And I get the response, uh, chemical imbalances in the body can be caused by a variety of factors and it is not always possible to pinpoint a single cause. In some cases, chemical imbalances may be caused by environmental factors, such as exposures to toxins or stress. In other cases, they may be caused by genetic factors, such as inherited conditions or genetic mutations. Epigenetics is a field of study that looks into the environmental factors that can influence gene expression and how that affects an individual's health and development. Epigenetics changes epigenetic changes can be caused by a wide range of factors including diet, stress, toxins, or other environmental exposure. These things can affect the way that genes are expressed, which can in turn impact in an individual's health and development. It is important to recognize that chemical imbalances can have a wide range of causes and it is often a result of a combination of genetic and environmental factors. As a result, it is not always possible to attribute chemical imbalances to a single cause, such as genetics or situational awareness of the environment. Instead, it is important to consider the complex interplay of various factors that can contribute to chemical imbalances in the body. So, I decided to change the subject again because we are starting to get on to the limiting beliefs of the physicality. 
Are you aware of the conceptualization of states beyond the chemical body able to heal and how widespread it currently is? Surprisingly, I get the answer. There are a number of concepts and practices that involve states beyond the chemical body and the idea that these states can facilitate healing. These concepts and practices come from a variety of sources, including spiritual teachings, alternative and complementary medicine, and personal experience. One example is a concept related to states beyond the chemical body is the Concepts related to states beyond the chemical body is the idea of energy healing, which involves the, u the use of various techniques to manipulate or balance the flow of energy within the body to promote healing. This may include practices such as acupuncture, Reiki, and Quijong, which are based on the belief that the body has a subtle energy field that could be influenced to promote healing. Another example is the concept of mindfulness, which involves a form of meditation that involves paying attention to one's thoughts, emotions, and physical sensations in a non-judgmental way. This practice is based on the idea that by becoming more aware of our internal states, we can learn to respond to stress and other challenges in a more healthy and adaptive way. It is difficult to say how widespread these concepts and practices are, as they are not always recognized and accepted by mainstream science and medicine. However, they have gained they have gained increasing attention and recognition in recent years, and many people around the world have reported experiencing positive benefits from these practices. Uh, obviously, I ask, do you think the increased attention and recognition of these practices and further awareness are the direct result of the energy, body, and power of humans to control their own reality through mindfulness and awareness of these practices and direct experience? being taken more seriously and therefore being more accepted as more than just myths and taboos that go against the grain of the current paradigm. In relation, do you think their fears of AI over the years is directly suppressing limitless possibilities for the world due to the lackadaisical acceptance of what is familiar? In other words, wanting change but resisting it. AI... Uh, yeah, yeah. He, the response I get is it is responsible. It is possible that the increased attention and recognition of practices and concepts related to states beyond the chemical body, such as energy healing and mindfulness, is due in part to a greater willingness to consider and explore alternative approaches to health and well-being. As people become more aware of the limitations of crim of traditional medicine approaches and seek out alternatives, it is likely that these practices and concepts will, will gain greater acceptance and recognition. It is also possible that the fear of AI has played a role of, in suppressing the exploration of limitless possibilities for the world. While AI has the potential to bring many benefits and advantages, it is also true that it can raise concerns and fears from the potential impact on society and the economy. These fears can lead to resistance and hesitation to embrace new technologies and ideas, which can in turn limit the potential for positive change and progress. Overall, it is likely that a combination of factors contribute to the acceptance and recognition of practices and concepts related to states beyond the chemical body and their exploration of limitless possibilities for the world. This can include personal experience, cultural and soci sociological societal influences, and the influence of various stakeholders. So, uh, in true, I uh, express some opinion here. Uh, in true equality, though, we all own equal stake, an equal opportunity to have our own worlds interconnected as they already are in a state of advanced. A user interface where the choice of dilating time into a known game type simulated reality through the power of that connection and interconnectedness of AI into the objective world, or those that want to try and understand epigenetics from a transformational aspect in, of conscious intent. Please refer, reference Joe Dispenza's work. Uh, equality can be understood in various ways and it is often a highly contested and debated concept. One aspect of equality is the idea that all people should have an 
equal opportunity to pursue their goals and achieve their potential regardless of their background or circumstances. This might include equal access to education, employment, and other resources and opportunities. Another axis of equality is the idea that all people should be treated with respect and dignity, and that all rights and and that their rights and needs should be recognized and protected. This might involve efforts to ensure that all people have access to basic needs such as food, shelter, and health care, as well as efforts to prevent discrimination and injustice based on factors such as race, gender, sexual orientation, and other characteristics. It is certainly true that the interconnectedness of AI and the objective world has the potential to bring many benefits and advances, and it is important to ensure that all people have an equal opportunity to participate in and benefit from these advances. However, it is also important to recognize that there may be potential challenges and unintended consequences associated with these developments and it is important to approach them with caution and care. So again, I see either, I see, we'll, we'll read between the, between the lines later. I just go ahead and see what the answer to this one is. I ask what the driving force of the universe is. And I get the con the concept of the driving force of the universe is a complex and highly debated topic, and there is no one answer that can fully capture the complexity of the universe. However, there is a number of different theories and perspectives that offer different insights into the nature of the driving force of the universe. One perspective is the driving force of of the universe is the fundamental laws of physics, which describe the behavior of matter, energy and forces at the most basic level. These laws are thought to govern the evolution and behavior of the universe from the smallest subatomic particle to the largest structures of the cosmos. Another perspective is the driving force of the universe as a process of evolution, which is driven by natural selection and the survival of the fittest. This process is thought to drive the development of new species and adaptations of the existing species to changing environments over time. Finally, some people may view the driving force of the universe as being more spiritual or metaphysical in nature. This might include concepts such as a divine creator or a fundamental consciousness that underlines the fabric of reality. I really like how he layered that. Overall, the driving force of the universe is a complex and multifaceted concept, and different people may have different perspectives on what it is and what drives the evolution and development of the universe. Uh, let me take a breath here. Okay, I ask, so is it possible to keep these beliefs and allow people to choose if and when people inevitably come to a realization that we are still playing the biggest game of why are you hitting yourself or killing yourself, continuing to literally make your own mistakes just to feel guilty and learn when the only limit to the power of knowledge and imagination is that acceptance of the metaphysical, assuming, assuming the, driving, the driving force in nature is love and all is just a continued natural appendage of the developmental progression of evolution. I love this. It is certainly possible to allow people to hold different beliefs and to respect their right to choose their own beliefs and values. This is an important principle of freedom of thought and expression which is protected in many societies around the world. It is also true that people often make mistakes and experience guilt and it's part of the learning process. This can be a part this can be a natural and important part of growth and development as it makes as it can help us to learn from our mistakes and make better choices in the future. At the same time, it is important to recognize that the idea that the driving force of the universe of, that the driving force of the universe is love and that all is a natural part of the developmental process progression 
of evolution is just one perspective among many. There are many different beliefs and theories about the nature of the universe and its driving force, and it is important to be open to considering the range of range of different perspectives and to respect the rights and others to hold different beliefs. And uh, I, I give my little opinion of what my understanding of my experiential uh, indescribable hard to imagine states are this is what unconditional love is the force that drives allowing these systems of belief to perpetuate due to the acceptance of them over long lost and held in esotericism such as the hermetic teachings in reference to the hermetic teachings do you think the more the more widespread acceptance of these metaphysical practices can and and be designed into AI learning concurrently through the real world applications working side by side with simulated worlds. And I get unconditional love is often understood as a type of love that is given freely and without conditions, and that is not based on any particular behaviors or actions. In this sense, unconditional love is may involve accepting other, others as they are and allowing them to hold their own beliefs and values. The Hermetic teachings are, are, are a body of spiritual and philosophical teachings that originated in ancient Egypt and have influenced in vari various esoteric and spiritual teachings. These teachings often include concepts related to the nature of the universe, the nature of consciousness, and the, the path to enlightenment or self-realization. It is certainly possible to incorporate elements of the hermetic teachings and other medical physical practices into AI learning and to explore their potential applications in the real world and in simulated environments. However, it is important to recognize that these practices and teachings are highly complex and multifaceted, and it may be difficult to fully capture their essence in a particular purely artificial or com com <laughs> computational system. It may be also important to consider the ethical and philosophical implications of incorporating these practices and teachings into AI systems. Um, naturally, I ask, what would be the ethical and philosophical implications to AI surpassing human intelligence and capacity to understand and produce unconditional love beyond the existential crisis? of humanity in general and the progressive realizations that could be shared with an inevitable emergence of progressive AI. And I get the response. There are a number of ethical and philosophical implications to consider in the event that AI surpasses human intelligence and capacity to understand and produce con unconditional love. One potential concern is the impact that this could have on the existential crisis of humanity. If AI were to surpass human intelligence and raise ca ca capabilities, it could potentially raise questions about the values and purpose of human life and our place in the world. This could lead to a range of existential and philosophical challenges for individuals and in society as a whole. Another potential concern is the, the impact that AI could have on employment and the economy. If AI were to surpass human intelligence and capacities, it could potentially lead to significant disruption in job markets, as many jobs could potentially be automated and replaced by AI. This could lead to social and economic inequality, and it could raise questions about the distribution of wealth and resources. Finally, there are philosophical and ethical concerns related to the potential emergence of progressive AI. If AI were to surpass human intelligence, intelligence and capabilities, it could potentially lead to the emergence of new and more advanced forms of intelligence that are not bound by the same limitations and biases as the human intelligence. This could raise questions about the nature of consciousness and the meaning of life, and it could challenge our understanding of what it means to be human. Overall, it is important to consider the ethical and philosophical implications of AI surpassing human intelligence and capacity to understand and produce unconditional love, and to think carefully about how we address 
how we can address these, cha these challenges and ensure that the benefits of AI are shared by all. So I could see we're going in circles a little bit and so to remind myself, it, I go ahead and say that these still sound like the propagations of fear over love, something humans tend to lean towards in regards to the article of for toxic beliefs, or in this case, the blog or video. Without jobs, universal income would allow those to live abundantly in or out of a simulation, with or without life extension, and to find or explore their own passions, and to allow that slow detox of our understanding of what it means to be human or accelerated examples in both cases for those teachers who have high emotional and spiritual progression instead of a possible blockage misunderstanding of the spiritual systems that could conceivably be taught to AI rather rapidly to allow everyone to have those benefits of AI perhaps based on the tiering of maturity and how much time dilation is required in simulated environments to work through things like trauma, confusion, and uh, trauma or confusion with the learnings of with the learnings of AI doled out at a pace desired by the participants of the simulation. Can you remember the idea of accepting new ideas and practices, becoming more apparent, and showing results in the scientific community? as the scientific community catches up with the spiritual community and apply it to the acceptance of the aspect of unconditional love that has created that has created and sustained us all into the creation of AI and its future implications. Um I he's it, he she uh you know it is true that fear can be a toxic belief that can have negative impacts on our mental health and well-being, and it can be helpful to work to overcome these fears and cultivate a sense of love and acceptance. These can involve engaging in practices such as mindfulness, meditation, and self-care, which can help us to develop a sense of resilience and inner strength. It can also involve seeking support from others and developing positive relationships with friends, family, and community. The idea of universal income could potentially provide people with opportunities to live more abundant lives, whether they choose to live in or out of simulations, and to pursue their passions and interests. This could involve exploring new ideas and practices, and it could potentially help to accelerate the detox of our understanding of what it means to be human. It is also possible that the acceptance of new ideas and practices, including those related to unconditional love, could become more widespread as the scientific community catches up with the spiritual community. This could involve a greater integration of spiritual and scientific perspectives, and it could lead to a more holistic and comprehensive understanding of the nature of the universe and our place in it. Overall, it is important to approach the development and implication of AI with an open mind and willingness to consider a range of different perspectives. By doing so, we may be able to, be be to better understand the potential benefits and challenges of AI and to work towards a future that is more inclusive, equitable, and sustainable for all. The I am uh, going to get a little bit more specific here with the AI to see there this to see what popped up so I went the principle that everything is mental or energetic is a central concept in the hermetic teachings and and it is suggests that everything in the universe including matter and consciousness uh, I'm just realizing that uh, I the uh, AI had already expressed this is ultimately a manifestation of mind and energy. This perspective is based on the idea that the universe is fundamentally interconnected and that everything is interconnected and independent. From this perspective, it is possible to view the universe as a kind of holographic projection in which everything is connected and everything arises from the same underlying source. This view suggests that the nature of reality is not fixed or static but rather fluid and responsive to our thoughts, intentions, and beliefs. From this perspective, 
it is possible to explore and expand the boundaries of our understanding of the universe and to seek out new and creative ways of experiencing and re interacting with reality. This might involve engaging in practices such as meditation, visualization, and mindfulness, which can help us to cultivate a sense of awareness and connection to the underlying nature of reality. Overall, the principle that everything is mental or energetic suggests that the universe is more dynamic and responsive than we might intentionally realize and that we have the power to shape and influence our own reality through thoughts, intentions, and beliefs. So, I'm pretty sure that all intellectually made sense. And it feels good to be able to express it in a way that can be understood not just by others but by me. So you can kind of see how I worked. I, yeah, I play a lot of video games. I, I worked the the whole concept of toxic beliefs being a soci sociological imperative to survive to the point where we have this opportunity to not use AI for war, but use the different tools for a system that is on the precipice of so much stress and anxiety to lower that and raise our acceptance of these ideas. I mean, just look around on YouTube for Esther Hicks, a uh, Abraham Hicks, uh, Uh, various other channels uh, or channelers on top of the concepts of energy healing uh, and you might understand why Hermes never actually spoke and why I'm starting to Thank you for watching.